Salt March had a tremendous impact on the Indian political scene. Millions responded to the Mahatma's call to break the government monopoly in the manufacture of salt. At the same time, a countrywide civil disobedience movement was launched to defy the British rulers by boycotting foreign goods, reading of land literature, and refusing to pay taxes and land revenues. Jawaharlal Nehru described the no-tax, no-rent campaign as a great success and said, in certain areas, hardly any collection had been made. Gandhiji <laughs> and all important leaders were arrested. The leaderless people carried on the struggle in the face of excessive police repression. The world took notice. Sales for growth in the Manchester Guardian. To face the lucky charge became an honor and a spirit of martyrdom. Volunteers went out in hundreds to be beaten. They gave a display of discipline and passive courage. Webb Miller, an American journalist, described the movement as the triumph of nonviolence over the armed forces gave Gandhi's idea of nonviolence his first victory. Gandhiji complained to the wife Troy about the unthinkable brutalities and savage methods. The wife were admitted. The movement is serious and has permeated many strata of Indian society and said, I am satisfied that we shall not solve the real problem merely by repressive measures. The Viceroy consoled his government by feeding false information that Muslims did not take part in the movement. The truth was that 12,000 Muslims, including Abul Kalam Azad, Abbas Sayyidji, Sayyid Mahmood, Rafia Masjidwai, Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, and Emi Ansari had courted arrest during the Salt of Yadra. The Secretary of State, which was then, expressed his embarrassment about Gandhiji's arrest and drove. I wish I felt sure what the right way to deal with him is. Police successes led to violent reactions amongst the revolutionaries. Surya Sen, Ganesh Ghosh and Anand Singh led the famous Chittagong Armory Raid. They occupied two armories, telephone and telegraph offices, and other strategic buildings. The Indian national flag was hoisted, and Surya Sen declared the president of the Chittagong branch of the revolutionary government of India. In the British counter-attack, many revolutionaries were killed. Sriti Lata Wadedar was killed, Ganesh Ghosh and Surya Sen arrested. In June 1930, the Simon Commission report was published. It confirmed the worst fears of the Indian leaders that the British wanted to retain their hold on India. Even the Viceroy was unhappy with the report and suggested early talks with India. With the Viceroy's consent, moderate leaders M. R. Jaikar and Tej Bado Sapu met Gandhiji at Yarwada. The Mahatma told them that without consulting the working committee, he could not give any commitment. Motilal Nehru, Jawaharlal, Vallabhai Patel, 
सरोजनी नायडू एंड सैयद महमूद व ब्लॉक टू यरवाल Since the government had given no assurance that India's demand for dominion status with safeguards would be considered, Gandhiji and the Indian leaders decided not to attend the proposed round table conference. The conference opened in London on the 12th November 1930. Indian delegates were selected by the White House. They represented communal organizations, princely states and British interests. The conference was designed to display the diversity of India rather than its unity. The failure of the conference made the British realize that without participation of the Congress, no constitutional progress was possible. On the 26th of January 1931, Gandhiji and all the leaders were released. Congress Working Committee met at Swaraj Bhavan, Allahabad. This magnificent building, the old Anand Bhavan, had been donated to the nation by Motilal Nehru in 1930. The Working Committee requested Gandhiji to meet the Viceroy. Gandhiji accepted the Viceroy's invitation and met him in Delhi on the 17th of February. Winston Churchill called the meeting. The humiliating spectacle of this one-time inner temple lawyer, now a seditious fakir, striding half-naked up the steps of the Viceroy's palace, there to negotiate and to parley on equal terms with the representatives of the King Emperor. But he was soon to realize that Gandhiji was not an ordinary individual, for he represented the will of a whole continent. Gandhiji and Lord Irvin held talk between the 17th of February and the 5th of March, 1931. Gandhiji said, I am hankering after peace, if it can be had with honor. On the 5th of March, the Gandhi Irvin Pact was signed. The Federation was accepted as an essential basis for framing of the future constitution of India. Civil disobedience movement to be discontinued. All ordinances in connection with the movement to be withdrawn. Property seized to be returned. The Congress to attend the second round table conference. As Article 2 of the Pact sought to retain British control over defense, foreign affairs, minority problems and finance, it was bitterly criticized by many congressmen. Gandhiji explained to the people that the settlement was only a two. India's goal still remains complete independence. In the Lahore conspiracy case, Bhagat Singh, Rajguru and Sukhdev were sentenced to death. Gandhiji and other leaders had pleaded with the authorities to save these young lives, but in vain. All the three were hanged in the Lahore Central Jail on the evening of March the 23rd, 1931. The 1931 Congress met in Karachi on March 29th. March and the board. Papa Sayyapi. Junior Sen Gupta. Aur Uchi Patni. Atma Gandhi. Uchi Patni. Uchi Patni. Uchi Patni. Uchi Patni. Black flag demonstrations and slogans of Bhagat Singh Zindabad greeted Gandhiji and the Congress leader. Gandhiji explained to the agitators that all possible efforts were made to save the lives of Bhagat Singh and his compatriots. Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, now called the Frantia Gandhi, attended the session with a strong contingent of his Khudai Khidmatka. The Karachi session was presided over by Sardar Vallabhai Patel. The Congress adopted a number of important resolutions. The Charter of Fundamental Rights, socialistic approach to lessen the burden of the poor, safeguard of the rights of minorities such as culture, 
language, script, and religious practices. The Gandhi Irvin Pact was ratified, and the Congress requested Gandhi to be its sole representative at the Round Table Conference. The Congress adopted the new national flag, a tricolour of saffron, white, and green, with the spinning wheel on white. People in their thousands attended flag hoisting ceremonies. Jawaharlal Nehru has said, the flag had become a symbol of much that we held dear. Jawaharlal and Kamla Nehru proudly waved the new flag. On 29th of August 1931, Gandhiji boarded the SS Rajputana at Bombay on his way to London. He was accompanied by Madan Mohan Malviya, Sarojini Naidu and Meera Ben. Gandhiji said, I must go to London with God as my only guide. I shall endeavour to represent every interest that does not conflict with the interest of the dumb millions. Aware of the tremendous faith the people had reposed in him, Gandhiji knew, I shall work for an India in which the poorest shall feel that it is their country, in whose making they have an effective voice. Mirabend, daughter of a British admiral, renounced a life of luxury and joined Gandhiji. The captain took Gandhiji to the bridge and also on a tour of the ship. arrived in England on the 12th of September 1931 and said, I am here to vindicate the honour of India and to uphold the truth as I see. Instead of expensive hotels, Gandhiji preferred to stay as a guest of Muriel Lester at Kingsley Hall in the poor district of East End of London. The Round Table Conference opened at St. James's Palace. It was a vast gathering of 112 delegates representing the government, princely India, Congress, the representatives of federal organizations and interests. The famous cartoonist David Lowe portrayed it as a circus. The main issues of federal structure and minorities were discussed at two different committees. The British played up the device of forces, divide and rule. Time and again they brought up the question of minorities. The delegates to the Minorities Committee consisted of Englishmen from England, Englishmen from India, Anglo-Indians, Muslims, Hindus, Untouchables, six parties, Christians and women. It is said that every one of them, except the women, asked for separate elections. Gandhiji rejected the very notion of separate electorate and said, In an independent India, all people will vote only as Indians for Indians. Gandhiji met many leading personalities and the common people to create a proper understanding of India's case. The cotton mills of Lancashire had been badly hit by the boycott of their goods in India. When workers complained, he asked them, Do you want Lancashire's prosperity to be built upon the ruins of the Indian artisan? Mm -hmm. 
Wherever he went, he was welcomed, applauded, and admired. I'm thankful that I got this opportunity of being surrounded by the happy children and seeing the homes of the poor. Thank you, thank you. Planting a tree in front of Kingsley Hall, he said. The result of the mission that brought me to London, I know that I can carry with me this presented memory of my stay in the midst of the poor people of East London. The conference was a failure. Gandhiji left England on the 5th of December, Disillusion, empty handed. Gandhiji addresses a conference of diplomats at Geneva. As we all officially reported, all that has the right to be complete independence that we want. Gandhiji was on his way home on the 14th of December 1931, the government issued emergency powers ordinances in the United Provinces and three ordinances in the Northwest Frontier Province to suppress the no-tax campaign. The ordinances empowered the government to seize movable and immovable properties and make arrests without warrant. It was a breach of the Gandhi Irwin tax. People protested. The authorities were merciless in their oppression. Jawaharlal Nehru and Tafar Duk Sarwani had been arrested when they were on their way to meet Gandhi. After an absence of nearly four months, Gandhiji reached Bombay on the 20th of December, 1931. The people of India gave him a thundering welcome. At Mani Bhavan, he gave an account of his talks at the Round Table Conference to the Congress Working Committee. He was informed that during his absence, properties, buildings, bank balances were being seized and arrests made without warrant. As deeply agitated Gandhiji said, I take it that these are all Christmas gifts from Lord Wellington, our Christian white boy. The same evening, over 200,000 people gave an overwhelming reception to Gandhiji at Azad Maidan, Bombay. Gandhiji condemned the British atrocities and their attempt to dehumanize a whole race. He asked the people to get rid of fear of death and adhere to non-violence and said, if a fight is inevitable, I would expect every son of the soil to contribute his might. I would not flinch from sacrificing even a million lives for India's liberty, for complete independence. 